Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting equation with Euler's number E. So we have E to the power IZ equals one plus IZ, and we're gonna be solving for Z values. And I'll be presenting two methods, and hopefully you like both of them, or if you favor one of them over the other, please let me know which method you like better. And if there's a third way to solve this problem, I would be more than interested to know. I'd be more than happy to see multiple approaches. All right, let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do something a little interesting because we're gonna be dealing with Taylor series. And hopefully you heard about Taylor series and Maclaurin series. You can basically write a function as an infinite polynomial or like a power series. So for example, e to the power x can be written as one plus x plus x squared divided by two factorial plus x cubed divided by three factorial plus x to the fourth divided by four factorial and so on and so forth. But the million dollar question is why? Let's go ahead and talk about it briefly and then we'll get into the solution because the solution will be fairly easy, right? But if you check, the series expansion, you're gonna get something like this. Anyways, we'll get to that, but let me go ahead and talk about how we can find it. So here's how it works. You're gonna set f of x equal to e to the power x, and write it as a sub zero plus a sub one x plus a sub two x squared plus a sub three x cubed as a power series, and our goal is to find these a sub zeros or a sub i's, whatever you wanna call them. We're gonna differentiate this function a few times, and every time we're gonna get e to the x, so f prime is gonna be e to the x, f double prime is gonna be e to the x, and f triple prime is gonna be e to the x, so on and so forth. You can do this infinitely many times, you're gonna get the same thing. But when you differentiate the right-hand side, you're not gonna get the same thing because the constant is gonna disappear, you're gonna end up with a1 plus 2a2x plus 3a3x squared, so on and so forth. And then when you differentiate it one more time, the derivative of the derivative, which is the second derivative, you're gonna get 2a2 plus 6a3x, so on and so forth. And of course, six can be written as three times two. By the way, that's important because that's gonna give you the factorial you're looking for, right? And one more time is gonna give you the uh, three times, two times one, and then four times, three times two, so on and so forth. Anyways, hopefully you get the idea. Eventually, you're gonna get something for this, e to the x, which is our power series. And then, here's the critical part. We don't want e to the x, we want e to the iz, right? So we're gonna replace x with iz, which is something you can do, and by the way, this converges, right, for every x value. And when you replace x with iz, you're gonna get an iz here, like one plus iz, and then iz squared over two, iz cubed over three factorial, two factorial can be written as two as well, anyways. And then you're gonna end up with this. So the series expansion, the Taylor series at z equals zero, and that's just the rest of it, is gonna look like this. And the reason why we have the plus minus signs is z squared i squared, i squared is negative one, and i to the third power is gonna be negative i, that's why we get those negative values, and then we're gonna get some positive values. But anyways, this converges everywhere, as you can see from, from alpha, and we're gonna get the answer. So let's go back to and of course, I do have the series representation written in a different form with the sigma notation. So from here, what am I getting? I'm getting the following. e to the iz equals one plus iz, right? And then I have iz squared divided by two factorial, which is negative, can I just cheat? Negative z squared over two or two factorial and then minus i z cubed over three factorial, and now we're gonna have the z to the fourth power, so on and so forth, right? Now, what am I doing with this? I do need to set this equal to one plus i z, but wait a minute, I already have one plus i z. So this whole thing is equal to because for my equation, right? What was my original equation? It was e to the i z equals one plus i z. So this whole thing is equal to one plus i z, Let's go ahead and set it equal to one plus i z. What's gonna happen is pretty interesting because one plus i z's are gonna cancel out and we're gonna end up with zero here. 
And guess what? We're going to have z squared, z cubed, z to the fourth, infinitely many values, and I can definitely take out a z, even a z squared, and then you can make it negative 2 to make the other guys positive, 1 over 2 factorial plus i over 3 factorial, and then minus z squared over 4 factorial, so on and so forth, and this is equal to 0. And of course, there's going to be more than one solution, but the obvious one is going to come from here, z equals 0. So, z equals 0 is a solution. Are there any other solutions? That's something to think about, right? Okay, great. So, that's basically the very first method that we're going to be looking at. Again, if you do know of a third method, please let us know in the comment section down below. So, z equals 0 seems to be a solution, but I'm not sure if that's the only solution. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, shall we? So second method actually kind of uses an interesting idea. I'm pretty sure some of you, maybe most of you, maybe all of you thought about it. And I'm like, you're like, oh, this is so obvious. Why don't you do this? Trust me, in one of the problems that we've done a while ago, it just escaped me and I went for the harder one because usually I'm looking for harder ways to solve the problem. I don't know why, but it's kind of like torture. And But it's like no pain, no gain, right? Hopefully you learn something from it. Anyways, we have e to the iz equals 1 plus iz. That was my problem, right? Obviously, at this point, you can do the following. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, I can go ahead and do this. Well, I do see iz twice, so can I just replace it with something like e to the power w maybe, because iz is a complex number too. So I'm going to get e to the power w equals 1 plus w. And I can kind of think about it as a real number because what if w is real, right? And in that case, I'm going to have something like this. Look, the graph is going to be the exponential versus 1 plus w, which is kind of like a line. So do you think this line, 1 plus w, by the way, its y-intercept is going to be 1, and this is f of w equals e to the w, and then I'm going to graph g of w, which is 1 plus w. 1 plus w is a line whose slope is 1, it goes through 0, 1, and it's going to have a x-intercept at negative 1, and it's going to look like this. Let's see if we can graph it, and guess what? It is going to go through the same point, but do you think it's going to cross the, this curve again? No, because if you look at the derivatives, the derivative at 0 is going to be 1, which is the slope of this line. So that's a tangent line. Make sense? So what does that mean? It means we have a solution at w equals 0. But what does that mean? w equals 0 implies iz equals 0, but iz can only be 0 if z is equal to 0. Therefore, we get the same solution. Again, is there another way to look at it? Okay, let me call that the third method because even though I wasn't planning on doing it, but it, this just popped up. So, so my third method is going to be the following. Since we can write e to the iz using Euler's formula as cosine z plus i sine z. Hopefully you knew that, right? Equals 1 plus i z. What am I going to do? I'm going to compare the real parts, and I'm going to compare the imaginary parts. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, from here we get the following. Cosine z equals 1, and sine z equals z. That's a system. you got to be careful. And from the first equation, I get basically multiples of 2 pi. So it's kind of like z equals 2 pi n, where n is an integer, right? And from the second equation, if z n is equal to 0, I get 0. 0 satisfies the first equation and the second one. But... If n is equal to 1, I get z equals 2 pi, but sine of 2 pi does not equal 2 pi, as you probably know, right? Because sine of 2 pi is equal to 0, right? It's the same as sine of 0. So this solution and everything else is not going to work. The only thing that works is going to be z equals 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And don't forget to let us know if you have a fourth method and bye-bye.